So guys, I've just made this self-centering mortise jig. This is a video how I've made it. Basically, it cuts me some mortises out what I can put floating tenons in. Yeah. Don't forget, drop a comment in, thumbs up or a thumbs down. And it's always nice to be nice. So I just spent about half an hour <laughs> setting this up to get me centres. Um, as near as I can get it, it took a little bit of uh, doing by lowering it, drill, scribing, turning it around, scribing. But I think I'm about there. It's pretty good. The idea is that it's a self-centering jig, yeah? So, if they're not perfect, then nothing else we... I'll just put it together temporarily. I've got to countersink them yet. But what I've also got to do is cut a piece of this wood away. That'll be minimum size that I do. But I'm just going to check it for centre as well now. While I'm here. Check it for centre. Give me five mil drill bit. It's good enough for me. So I've just marked these. Oh, you can't see. Yeah. I've just mark these. I'm going to count sink them in. So that the bed sits flat on top of the wood and what I've also got to do with bed is make up that difference from them that bar then what I'm going to use for my bed is this perspex so now it's case find it's center of this and then I'll scribe it on both ends Let's have a look. This is the second test. I've just had to slightly alter two positions of two screws because it was slightly out. But I think I'm on the ball now. That looks pretty good to me. Very good, in fact. Now I've got to drill another hole in here for some sliding mounts, stops and we've got to put some sides on here drill all the holes in that plate um, this is this is 40 so I've gone 29999 nine, nine, basically these holes here are for me sliding adjustment which Again, 
Oops, if I get them in right holes. Again, I'll make out of some scraps from this. So if you can see that that's in that hole and what I'll do is I'll just lift her out a bit and then drop it down onto the line just to make sure that this is correct all the way along. I'm going to put this piece in the middle, yeah, I'm putting that down here. The reason being, or being, I got pulled on my beans the other day, um, the reason being is that this Oh, you can't see now. The the metal, yeah, is the depth of the metal. So if I put a piece on here that I've clamped in and I press it down, it can tip, yeah. Instead of instead of it being flat, it can fold. So what I'm going to do is put this piece in the middle there. So my workpiece is always set on that, yeah. It'll be squared up by these left and right but, it, but where i'm actually working is supported fully in that place so therefore if i'm doing an end stock or a side stock it's supported completely on that i have scribed it i want it down middle and now i've messed it up again And all I'm going to do is put that on top of there like that. Line your lines up. Just run some acrylic under it. Uh, some acetone under it. I don't know whether you can see that, but this acetone sucks underneath and it will cause it to weld. We'll put a little few cracks on that on side of there where it's been cut, but I'm not worried about that. And I'll leave that. Because this is not polished acrylic, it will cause some airline fractures in the piece that I've stuck to it, but it doesn't matter. Can you see them? a few little airline fractures that's caused by the acetone because it's not proper glue for this but that will weld them two pieces together now so that's permanent i tried some test pieces this, i tried super glue as well that's why it's all messy but that's the acrylic so there might be some cloud underneath it when it dries when it sets but that's really hard to get off that you know that's just the acetone under it so what i need now there's a couple of pieces because these are going to be my stops I'm going as wide as the plate on that obviously because that's what's sliding in in the jig what I've also got to do with these is cut some slots in them so I'm going to have to set the outer table up oh no so these fit on there like that and basically allow me to set a stop and that's how these will work now what I've got to do is flip them over and I'm going to drop a touch of super glue just in the cap in the screw heads so guys let's set this up give it a blast to what it's like I've just marked this piece of wood up. That's my centre. That's my centre of that one. And I want to stop here five millimetre from either end. So I'm going to attempt <laughs> attempt to get this in. Now this won't be set up like this normally. This is just because I can't be bothered to get workman chart. So, 
let me show you I'll just line up that centre line and I've got to adjust these up to me router so that my router just touches that outer line and then we should be golden but once this is set up now it lowers match anyway that now again these end mortises I would actually have the piece the workpiece in the vise and put that over that workpiece because I'd obviously be doing a batch of these and a batch of them not just one at a time, so set up time obviously. Now what I do need is a spiral jig, uh, a spiral up longer, longer bits because I can only get, I can only plunge into that about 15 millimeter, maybe a bit more. 18 millimeter so I need some longer bits right then I'll make a tenon to go in it and we'll see so guys all I did was cut a piece down I'd obviously run a lot more down to get ready and I just run route, route it over on the route table yeah there's me hole Like I say, I need a spiral bit that's bigger. It's half a millimetre out on one side. So what I'll do to cure that is on one of the jaws, I'll just put a couple of pieces of tape or even one piece of tape. I'll put a piece of tape on every time because that'll alter the centre. So therefore it'll bring it absolutely correct, but half a millimetre. The other thing is if I mark everything to one side, so I've got my front. So this is my this is my front. I mark on front of that front, and on each piece front. And as long as I cut them all in that orientation, they'll fit perfect because the half a millimetre is on the same side. Then, if I turn it like that, it's probably not half a millimetre on that. It's probably quarter millimetre because it's, it's exaggerated it. You can see. I mean it's next to nothing but just a piece of duct tape on the side where it needs pulling over will do that and once it's set up proper to do batches of stuff then it'll be rather faster than well it'll be fast <laughs> and that's what we need because what I've got to do we've got 12 doors to make and the cabinet and I think we fit the cabinet for the for the router because I want a separate router table it's more convenient and I'll do that first as a practice piece and that'll give me an idea on how I want to set it up quick and easy but yeah I'm pleased with that works out okay I think what I'd allow myself is a bit of slop Instead of making that absolutely canal, then I'd make it a millimetre short. That just allows me then a little bit of upward and downward movement to make sure that everything lines up perfectly. Which I can just about, well that does, that works. Anyway, thumbs up, or a thumbs down. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Nice to be nice.